Hey everyone out there on the webinet, Necropants here, and as Tekken 8 has been out for a few days, and after greedily devouring the offline content, including copious amounts of time in practice mode, I'm just now delving into the online environment, and wanted to chime in with my thoughts on a long-standing issue that has once again reared its ugly head. Before I begin, although not perfect, Tekken 8 really does feel like a return to form for the Tekken project team and includes, I would say, some revolutionary features that I've been wishing for some time in a punch-up game. And I'm glad to see all that money they made with the success of Tekken 7 did not go to waste. Good job, Namco. One of these features in this new world of artificial intelligence is a ghost mode where the game will actively learn and replicate your style, making for some of the most engaging offline content I have ever seen in a fighting game and a great low pressure way to improve with its robust replay features. We can actually jump into any match and uh, as it plays out and take control, allowing you to improve your gameplay. So if you're a fighting game curious or someone who fell away from them in recent years, I would definitely recommend checking it out. Now to the issue at hand. For a long time, there's been this narrative floating around that PC gaming is the domain of cheaters, pirates, and other nether-do-wells that will ruin your online experience. And as someone who has been an avid player on multiple console platforms over the years and PC more recently, I have always been annoyed with this notion because, for the most part, PC gaming has been a relatively enjoyable experience with little of these disruptions for me. I actually find online gaming on console to, in general, be a much more frustrating experience. Yes, I'm sorry console fanboys, your platform has cheaters too, and it does not always come in the most obvious vehicle. I have long pondered why this is the case, and I can only imagine that, although PC tends to be somewhat easier to engage in exploitative practices, the audience also tends to be an older, dare I say, more mature people with the resources and desire to have a PC capable of gaming. Yet, on the other hand, the console online environment is rife with kids on Wi-Fi connections screaming endlessly into the mic about what they did to your collective mums last night. And yes, Tekken itself was well known to have some critical design flaws which were low-hanging fruit to people who wanted to artificially inflate their ranks and manipulate saves on PC in Tekken 7. I still ended up making PC my primary platform of choice in the last Tekken era. So here we have the current top 8 ranked in Tekken 8, which includes, for the first time in the franchise's history, full cross-play support among the platforms, and, well, 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 7 out of 8 players are console players. Oh, this is cause console players are superior, I hear you cry. Well, allow me to retort. It is peculiar that so early to the game's release, we were within hours seeing people with such high ranks given the nature of Tekken ranked grinding, and the game features this go system where you can go onto the leaderboard, download a player's character and play them offline with the AI taking control, approximating the character's style. Is this a perfect replication? Of course not but it does a better job than I've ever seen in any game of replicating a player's style and movement, combos, etc. And with significant repetition, will emulate your idiosyncrasies with hilarious precision. Yes, that includes your degenerate ass teabagging behavior. So I took the liberty to download some of these <coughs> amazing player's top characters and see what they were made of. And this is what I found. And one look at this footage of Yoshimitsu, and I think you will see where I'm going with this. The footage does indeed speak for itself. Sure, hackers and cheaters are a problem on PC, but consoles are not inoculated from this despite popular belief. But on the other hand, in my experience, and I have a lot, I barely run into this issue, yet on console it's a constantly frustrating experience with terrible Wi-Fi connections and until very recently excruciating slow load times. But before I digress, impudent and obnoxious children, fanboys, rage quitters, pluggers and of course, rank boosters. 
I'm not sure exactly how they're going about this, but I can only imagine they're gaming the matchmaking system and beating each other up, maybe on multiple accounts, until they reach the top of the table. And here we have Exhibit 2. Not as seemingly egregious as the obvious Yosemitsu colluder. And I spent some time lackadaisily messing around to see what makes this player tick, as it were. And I found that if you deal enough damage, the bot will turn relatively passive and wait for you to kill it. Then I eventually uncovered if I just held forward, the AI ghost of this top player would spam the same string over and over again until you died. So this is obviously a collaborative effort, as it were. Now, in comparison, look at this footage. This AI opponent is of the ghost of a relatively famous tournament Nina player, Jod. In Tekken 7, he famously dismantled Super Akuma's Akuma in a tournament. A bit different, isn't it? Now, I don't claim that this AI is perfectly representing Jod as a player, but it's putting in a strong effort and utilizing fairly advanced Nina techniques. It's a night and day difference. I cannot fathom what these people get by doing this. It obviously takes significant time to do it. It doesn't offer you any tangible rewards, and it's easily exposed that you aren't actually good at the game at all. At the same time, Tekken is a eSport in the cleanest definition of the term. And a global tournament is run every year with significant monetary awards. So all this achieves is to disrupt the integrity of the online experience. Now, I have to add, as for naming and shaming, I frankly don't give a fuck when it comes to this stuff because it just annoys me that much. I guess it's a pet peeve of mine. I also did not spend the time looking at every account. The first two were enough. And I don't mean to be a fighting game Karen, but if you play the game, please use the in-game reporting feature to let Namco know you're not happy about this. These people need to be stripped of their rank, if not outright banned from the game entirely. I think it's time to send a clear message to console rank boosters that you are not only wasting your time, it is dangerous to you. But also I urge caution, make sure you are absolutely sure the person you are reporting is one of these exploiters and you have substantial evidence like I have demonstrated. That's all I have for you today. Like, dislike, subscribe, comment and all that YouTube garbage, haters are welcome. And Necropants signing out.